asking you uh two years down the office they'll give you period maybe three months honeymoon for you to understand what is going on in government to understand to discover whatever it is an inspector general of police with police officers under his command will do something that puts the president in a bad light okay because after he works for the president it's not the other way around and that is why for example each time there is a change of government all these ministers certain officers they become empty so that the president can appoint his own people that will be able to implement his policies okay now it's a it's a, it's a challenge okay if let's say uh you 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 cannot say people are not obeying me then you're not fit for the job okay you have to figure out how that ought to be uh implemented now the problem you have let's take for example when you have political rallies and the application of the public order act it is clearly stated in the upnd manifesto that they will take steps to repeal that law in the interim they will make sure that the law is properly what does zambia stand for what is zambia okay the constitution is very clear as to what the republic of zambia is amongst many other things the constitution clearly states that zambia is a multi-party democratic state now, when we have a conversation like we are having right now, it is important to bear that in mind. This is a democracy, a multi-party democracy. Even as a police officer, the IG, when you make decisions, always remember that you do not do, make a decision that undermines that character of our republic. That extends to the president. That extends to ministers. That extends even to the Speaker of the National Assembly and everybody in this republic. It extends to you and I. We have a duty to defend that democratic character of this republic. It is a multi-party democratic state. That is very important, and every decision should be able to enhance, protect that character of what this republic is. We cannot, therefore, make, take any decision that undermines, that um, undermines the democratic character of this country. And when we do so, we violate the Constitution. Mm -hmm. where, does, where does political parties where does constitution? our constitution lie? Okay, so it is not enough for you to say I've been elected. <laughs> you now have, your election has to be tested against the constitutional requirement. Was your election free and fair? Now, if it is not, we have an obligation to make sure that every citizen has an obligation to make sure that that party lives true to these constitutional ideals. Okay? And uh, it's not just an internal matter. It is actually a constitutional matter. Okay? So, I know, I mean, there are these controversies going on. But the point is, you ask yourself, if you are elected president, was this through a free, fair, and fair election within the party? If it is not, then we are not obliged to recognize that. That election is in violation of the Constitution, the so, national Constitution. So is it a constitutional matter, or it's a matter for you know, a high court to determine? What, what, what is it? It depends how you yeah. cook your case. Okay. 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 It, if it I was coming to you, would yes. you say this is a constitutional matter, or this is really a matter to take to the high court? <laughs> depending upon the facts yeah. really I, yeah. I i would go to the constitutional court mm -hmm. i would argue this uh, uh from a constitutional uh i would take it as a constitutional law issue because a political party is still subject to the constitution okay and um and not only that when you look at article e a uh, sub article e it says a party shall respect the rights of its members to participate in the affairs of the political party these are constitutional obligation that are that are imposed on every political party and on its members whatever your constitution says but you are still bound by 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 um 
by the constitution of the of the of the republic so it's no longer just an internal matter whatever is internal is still subject must be consistent must comply yeah, with the national constitution but you know what okay, let me do people me... even understand the meaning of the oath that they take i don't think that's what they do okay if they did half of the craziness that we are seeing wouldn't be happening if they took the problem is that I doubt even any of your MPs have ever read the Constitution. Although I'm told the first thing they are given when they are elected is a copy of the Constitution. And I don't think that I've even read, they've read that instrument. Now, it tells you the importance of a Constitution. Okay? Now, the, the value of a Constitution is this. It is the reference manual. Anything has a manual, right? If you are talking about a machine or a computer, it comes with a manual how it is to operate. But we are a republic. The question is, how is this republic going to run? That is what is provided for in the Constitution. Now, there is no way you can run this republic effectively and correctly if you do not understand the Constitution in the first place. judgment. And I said, but why are you pronouncing on uh, Lungu's eligibility in 2017 when you are still four, five, four years away from the next election. How do you know, even know that this man will be alive anyway? And if he's alive, how would you know that he even wants to stand? And I said, there is a mechanism for challenging somebody's eligibility. That is when he has filed his nomination. I waited until after he had filed his papers. And I went to court. And I said, this man does not qualify to stand because there's a provision of the Constitution which says that a person that has held the office of president twice is not eligible for election. Now, that was my position. President Lungu's side had their own position, which they said, yes, but he has been in the office twice, but that first period was less than Three years, therefore, it doesn't count. And I argued that provision doesn't apply to President Lungu because that period you're talking about was before the amendment of the Constitution because the Constitution does not work backwards. It works forward from the date of enactment. And I said that provision was going to affect people elected after 2016. The Constitution. So we are two views. And that's the way we do it. That's what rule of law is all about. You have a dispute. I don't start beating you up so that you can agree with me. No, we go to court. That's the most civil way of resolving disputes. We went to court. President Lungu's side won. The court, the constitutional court declared to say, no, we agree. That period of less than three years doesn't count. So... The only time that counts is the period from 2016 to 2021. Therefore, he has only held the office once. That is the court. Rule of law means accepting the law even when you don't like it. Okay? We can't choose to say, okay, I like this law, I respect it. I don't like this law, I want to respect it. No. So, did I, do I agree? I do not. But... Am I going to disobey that? No. The court has ruled. I accept that. And there's a difference. Uh, okay. There's, there's a difference here between... Mm. This is for any, for any president, any former president, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. First, you know, there's been a lot of this immunity yeah. issue. And I've, I, I have said, just like reform of the Constitution, that train has sailed. But I think also removal of immunity, that train has equally sailed. Okay? It will be stupidity to remove Lungu's immunity. It will be irresponsible to do that because we had the opportunity to do so. I have argued, like we are saying, the first six months you take stock. Within the first six months, if you wanted to investigate Lungu, you should have done that within the sec first six months. But you have lost that opportunity. Now, to begin removal of immunity after he has declared his return to politics. That would be abuse of power. That would be abuse of power. Now, the way the immunity works is that there are two types of immunity. 
when the president, when you are president, there is the side of you that is president, and you still have a private, you are still a private person. When you act, when you are acting as president, you enjoy absolute, absolute immunity for whatever you do. For instance, you can send uh, soldiers or policemen, you instruct them, they end up killing people for whatever reason. There is no anybody can come and say, attribute that to the president. So the president is vicariously liable because he's the one who gave instructions. He enjoys absolute immunity. Then there are things that the president may do in his own personal capacity. When you are president, you do not cease, you do not cease to be a person in your own right. Let's take an example. The president gets tired and I say, ah, I'm going to a, for a joyride. I just want to, to have some fresh air. Boom, the president gets involved in a car accident and kills somebody, which is a crime. Or maybe he's even under the influence. Now, that is a crime that has been committed in his personal capacity because at that particular time, he was just conducting himself as an ordinary person. But the law says, for those actions, criminal actions that he has done in his own personal capacity, he cannot be prosecuted whilst he's in office. So what happened, the law provides that when he leaves office, that is the only time that those issues can yes. become a subject. Because so now, no, immunity no he's office. an ordinary person. It's like you and I. So traffic offenses. Okay, yes. Yeah. If he gets involved in deals and then there, there is evidence to that, if he can be arrested tomorrow, the immunity was for the period he was in office. If he has committed any crimes from 2021 when he left uh, the office, he can be arrested. There's no immunity there. Okay? This is the misunderstanding. Right now, the moment... President Lungu left independence. It was at Hero Stadium. He became an ordinary person. That is why he's at liberty. If he wants to come back to active politics, that's his prerogative. Just like you and I can decide to go and join uh, politics, we can always do that. You see, he has his rights. He's entitled to, to do whatever he wants. He's an ordinary person like you and I. The only difference is that he's only one of the seven people that have held the office of president. That's the only distinction. But otherwise, in terms of everything else, is an ordinary person like you and I. Okay, what does the law then say? Um, because there is this huge debate um, that we've been having about whether or not there is any case for us to say that he defrauded the taxpayer um, by saying he wasn't in active politics when there is an argument to be made that he was actually in active politics. Well, you can try it. Mm -hmm. You can try it, but I don't see how fraud exists. Okay, maybe because, not fraud, maybe yeah, a crime. money through false pretenses. How? When? Because, remember, the right to take part in political activity is a constitutional right. It's not created by statute. Okay? The right to take part in the political activities is a, is, is a right that is protected by the Constitution. Yes, one moment I can see, okay, I've quit politics. I mean... Is it an offense to change your mind over something? No. The last time I checked, it's not a crime to change your mind. Now, there are consequences. Oh, what it means is that as long as I am not in active politics, as defined by law, okay, I'm a former president and I'm not in active politics. I'm entitled to my benefits. Okay? But the moment you join active politics, that's it. Okay? As far as the law, logic will dictate that you cannot have it both ways. You cannot be in active politics and still receive your benefits. Okay? Although this is something that has not been litigated, but logic will dictate that the moment you go back into active politics, those benefits so stop. Is it important for us to understand what active politics is? Yes. Yeah. So how, how do we define, should I, maybe I read the definition? Yeah, please, yeah, please, okay. it's, it's there. It's, yeah. it's not a mad, I mean, this is the beauty of the law. When you talk about rule of law, it's not your definition of active politics. It is what the law defines, and that's what we, we go by. Okay, so, definition. yeah, the, you know, but that is subject to the interpretation yeah. of the various provisions. Yeah. But I would not determine Alungu's fate based on what people are saying. I would determine his fate based on what he has said himself. 
Okay? For example, what was the official communication that he did to government? He said, uh, I don't know the exact language of the letter, but he said, I think he resigned or whatever, he stopped being in active politics, whatever it is. I think that is what is important. Okay? What was his stated official position? Okay? Secondly, whatever he was doing, does it fit in the definition of active politics? Again, it is a matter of looking at the facts of the case and looking at whether they satisfy the ingredients of that definition of, um, of uh, active politics. And if it does, then somebody would say, well, he was in active okay, politics. Let me, let me read you a letter. This yes. an interesting letter. This is from the, at the time he was acting secretary to the cabinet. This is in, uh, on the 18th of January, 2022. Uh, January? I, January 2022, 18th January 2022. Okay. Uh, this letter is writing to a citizen, a private citizen, I think, who may have petitioned uh, the Secretary to Cabinet to explain what's going on. And he says, I wish to confirm that the sixth president of the Republic um, informed Cabinet Office through a letter dated 28th August 2021 of his decision to resign as PS <laughs> president and indeed from active politics. Mm -hmm. On the basis of his resignation, Cabinet Office proceeded to provide the pension benefits with effect from that date. Mm -hmm. According to records held at Cabinet Office, the sixth president is not in active politics, mm -hmm. and here's, here's the right, and has resigned from the PF president. Mm -hmm. Is, do you have, can, if I'm former, if I'm president, I become a former president, can I say I have, I'm not in active politics, but I still maintain presidency of a political party? No, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. You can't. Because you see, if you hold an elective, mm -hmm. from the definition, mm -hmm. you said you shouldn't express interest to hold an appointive or elective office. Okay, you shouldn't aspire to, uh, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you shouldn't hold. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you are talking about possibly a transition. Mm -hmm. Okay? Maybe internally, uh, I'm not trying to be a yeah, spokesperson, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know the, in, yeah. the internal dynamics yeah. of, the, of their own political mm -hmm. party. But the most important thing is the official communication that he has resigned from his position. Now, well, what, how the party was going to treat that is a different matter now. But what is critical is what transpired thereafter uh, within the political party. Okay? But these are facts that ought to be, uh, to be litigated. I mean, one needs to have a complete picture of what transpired in order to have an answer, uh, an answer to, that, um, to that question. But this is neither here nor there, okay? Lungu is not a factor in it's terms of... Factor, but we have to defend the Constitution. Yes, we have to defend the Constitution, yes. We have to defend the Constitution, and nobody is above the Constitution. But the point still remains that if I thought there is an issue with that, then that, that has to be litigated. But there is a fact. The fact is... The issue is moot, by the way, because he's now in, 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 he has announced his return to politics. But there's also something else that we need to clear. I can resign from an elective office or appointive office and still remain a member of a political party. A former president cannot seize. If he wants, he can still continue to be a member of his political party. But the only thing that he's restrained from doing is to be to hold an elective or appointive office in his pol political party. That's the only uh, restraint. But otherwise, he's free to remain a member of his political party. And he can even go there and take part in, the, in voting, for example. It doesn't stop him. He can he go can there a member. As, a member. as a member. Yes, as a member. But the only prohibition is that he can't uh, assume an elective office or appointive uh, office. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any changes anywhere? <laughs> you know, you have a, a well, national. I mean, the difference is you're not, you're not barred from appearing in court, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. you mean my? Oh yes. no, yes. that was a well, that was a blip in my career, you know. But the point is that you see the challenges that we face is not just to do with the judiciary. Uh, the judiciary. I mean, we to be honest, we are, we have a broken system of government, right? You have a national assembly that has gone rogue, completely rogue, okay? I mean, these are some of the issues that we, we need to address, okay? For example, the nonsense that has gone on in the national assembly shouldn't have happened in the first place, okay? Now, you talked about history. A problem with politicians, they're very poor students of history. We have 
almost 100 years of a parliamentary system. 100 years. We started in 1924 with the Legislative Council. We moved to a Legislative Assembly. Then we moved to a National Assembly. 100 years of a parliamentary system of government. Now, the issues that we experience in the National Assembly, we have experienced them before. There is a laid down tradition between the National Assembly and the courts. The position has always been when you have a matter being litigated in court, that matter is sub juris, meaning it cannot be a subject of discussion or consideration within the National Assembly. So, you have two arms of government. They have to respect one another. They should not be able to, uh, to interfere in each other's position. There are several cases that have happened. Uh, if you have time, we'll talk about them. But the position of Parliament, uh, the National Assembly has always been, as long as a matter is in court, it is out of bounds. It cannot be a subject of discussion by the National Assembly. But now, we saw the drama that happened a couple of uh, days, ago. Does, days ago where the speaker goes rogue and recognizes somebody as a leader of the opposition. That's crazy. First, it is in violation of the Constitution because the Constitution is very clear. Article 74.1 clearly states, first of all, one deals with the appointment of leader of government business. That is, the president shall appoint 